you know, I'd like to start with something that's not old. It's something I just started doing like two weeks ago. And I play uh, bass guitar at church. And anybody else in here play a guitar of any kind? Okay. Use both hands, right? Use both hands. How do you turn pages? <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, with a little help from friends and a little research, I found this. Uh, there's an app. Uh, I'll get you the name of the app as soon as I get back out of it. I just got it. It's an app. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, you could do this with PowerPoint. You just scan the music and put it in there, and then you just turn pages. But how do you turn pages? Do you have to reach out and flip it or just do that? No. I got a foot pedal. I got a Bluetooth foot pedal that talks to this. Time to turn a page. I just stomp on the pedal. It turns a page. I stomp on the other pedal. It goes back. Okay. So I just thought that was very cool. Yeah, that's a, and that's uh, awesome. it's really useful. It's really useful. It's not a dumb idea. It's a really useful idea. Now, what is this called? This is called DD Gigbook. DD Gigbook. Uh, there are a number of different kinds, and what I did was I picked one that definitely works with uh, the foot pedal I had picked out. There seemed to be two main brands of foot pedals, and uh, I chose one because uh, it was less expensive and it seemed to work fine. And this software, this app works with it, so uh, it's a done deal. So now the, the music is slightly smaller than 8.5 by 11. But I, I cut off everything when I scan it. I cut off all the extra white space and other stuff. And I can um, get my stylus out, add notes on the music, you know, write myself reminders, and that. So that's new. I've just been using that for two weeks. That's cool. So I started with something new. Now, I'm going to go back farthest and show you this. This is my first tech. It's my first transistor radio. I got this one when I was like, I don't know, seven or eight or nine years old, something like that. In fact, on the back of it, it says boys' radio. <laughs> I don't know what a girl's radio looks like. It's this boy's radio. So it's a, it says on the front, two transistor radio. Okay? And this was fantastic. I could put it in my pocket. I could hide it under my pillow and put the earphone in and listen to it. I'm supposed to be asleep at night, you know. Um, so, and it had a... A, a design problem, it's probably the state of the art, but a design problem was the antenna was a, a rigid screw-in antenna, mm -hmm. which, you know, for a young boy, you're going to hit something and break it off right away. So I had a problem with that, and it's glued back together here. So uh, anyway, my first tech was this uh, two-transistor radio and handy <coughs> carrying case. <coughs> Uh, I don't know which direction to go first, if we should, let's, let's start with calculators, okay? Oh, here's one. Tech does not have to be electronic. Here's some old tech, okay? It's not electronic, uh, but still useful today. I put batch files on my Windows computer. Uh, I use batch files to back up stuff. Seems like that's going to be slow on that platform. <clears throat> <laughs> well, it's not the platform. I use it in, you know, I have Windows 7, but I write batch files. Mm -hmm. to uh, the uh, xcopy X is a really cool uh, bat, uh, DOS command because it'll copy folders. So I put an icon on my Windows uh, desktop, double click, backs up my Outlook folder. Because you know, I, I created a batch file, it's just a text file. So all tech is not electronic. That's right. <clears throat> Let's go with calculators. I've got a calculator out here. Um, for you to uh, play with, see if you can figure out how to use it. Now, it fascinated me because it has these glowing wires for the, uh, for the numbers. Okay, and it has a dial where you can dial in how many decimal places you want. It has a rounding switch where you can choose to uh, round up or not. It has a constant switch, which was a common thing on old calculators. 
Uh, we don't seem to have that today. We have memories today. Okay? But the constant uh, allows you to store a number in there, for example, a, uh, a tax amount. So then you can type in the amount of the purchase, multiply it by the constant, and it, you don't have to enter the constant. So um, that's in there. And some of these, I don't remember what they do. The, the asterisk and the dime in there, I don't remember what they do. Uh, but you're welcome to come up and try that out. Uh, it's it's kind of neat to watch the wires glow. Every, every position has wires in the shape of all the numbers, all 10 numbers, all 10 digits. So when the wire uh, glows, it's standing out, you know, visually from all the ones that are not turned on. Uh, and it works. And it works. And I don't know if those are... Um, I don't think they're vacuum tubes. I just think they're, uh, they're wires uh, in a big <coughs> glass container for each of them. <clears throat> so that's a pretty old calculator. What did we decide about 72? This one was purchased in 1973. I bought it at a, a used office equipment auction at one of my employers uh, when I was working there. So uh, that's when that was new. Uh, an older technology calculator a is a slide rule. <clears throat> okay. I love the holder you got. I love the holder. Oh, yeah. Well, sweet. you see, when I was a freshman in college, I was in the engineering program, and all the engineering geeks walked around with one of these on their, their belt. Yeah, I love like, that. You had to have one you had for to. engineering. Okay? <laughs> uh, so we didn't have electronic calculators, so you had to have that. And this is a slide rule. Have any of you used a slide rule? One? Okay. Well, I'll have to show you how to do this. I can't remember offhand. I, I could figure it out if I looked at it again. But. Yeah, well, I've, I've lost some stuff. I can multiply and divide. Okay, I can multiply and divide. Uh, so, um, I don't know how close the picture yeah, you can get there. How, where, where do you want me to go? Okay, so I'm looking at the, uh, the C and D scale down here. If you can see the C and D scale. And I move the slider over my first number. So if my first number is 15, I go out here to put the, put the index over the 15. And then I move this to um, uh, a number on the other scale. We'll, we'll just pick two. Okay, so I put this over the number on the other scale. And then you read it back on the, first, the bottom scale again, which is 30. Okay, so I chose 15 on the bottom scale, two uh, on the, the D scale, two on the C scale, and I read the answer on the, back on the D scale uh, under the, the needle there. <clears throat> now, the stuff about this, the thing about this that drives the, the kids crazy, you have to do the decimal places in your head. You know, that could be 15 times two. It could be 150 times 20. It could be 150 times uh, 200,000. Know, you gotta do the decimal places. It doesn't give you the digits. It just gives you the, the significant digits. And this thing only works to like uh, three or four significant digits. Definitely three, maybe four. Now, they use this technology. Do any of you uh, remember a, an airplane, the uh, SR-71 Blackbird? Yeah. One of my favorite airplanes of all time. Designed in the late 50s okay, with this. You can imagine, you know, designing that kind of technology uh, without a computer or calculator. Wow. <coughs> and how so, much was it back in the day, Paul, for that set, for the holster uh, and your you know, slide roll member? I'm thinking it was like fifty or sixty dollars. Okay. For college kids, that's pretty expensive. But, yeah, that, that was a lot. Right. But yeah. uh, you know, you had to have it. And, uh, oh, you're welcome to look at this. It's probably it's comparable to buying like a TI now for a hundred. Do you want to pass that around, maybe, you think? Or, is that, or do you want to yeah, just... Okay. Let's do that. Anything you don't want to pass around, I understand. The, the slide is a little stiff from not being used, so... Uh, yeah. Cool. Let's see what it looks like. And then there's the back side of it. It's got logarithmic scales. It's got all kinds of stuff on there that I never did use. A few things that I did and forgot. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, you can, uh, do, you can do calculus on a slide roll. Yeah. I... One of my professors at Rockford College actually taught me how to do, you know, taught us all how to do calculate, basic calculus in a grade, or, you know, derivatives, whatnot. It's, you know, log functions, 
Yeah. In Matt's past life, he was a math teacher. Yeah, I was a math teacher. Yes. Okay. I pulled him out and became a programmer. <laughs> you saved him, huh? Yes, I saved him. Yes. <laughs> Depends on what day you ask him, probably. Okay, so I bought, I had to buy that. That was required for my engineering program when I was a freshman. But being the, the tech guy that I am, when these became available, I got one of these. Okay. This is a uh, an ele pocket electronic calculator. I don't have oh, any boy. pockets that big, but uh, that's what it was billed as, as a pocket electronic calculator. Oh, Minuteman 2. It does uh, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. That's it. And you notice, uh, if you can tell, it does have a constant switch on here. The old calculators like the constant switch because they didn't have memory. They didn't have the memory. So it's, it's like a one number of memory. Yeah. Uh, and this. Uh, you know, the, the calculator would still work, but the uh, charging cable, you know, you know self-destructed after a while. Now, <clears throat> this had eight decimal places on it, and I learned a lesson very early about the quality of data, okay, because we were expected to be using that slide rule. So my engineering or physics or whatever I was in uh, gave us problems with data to like three, uh, three significant digits. So I pull out my calculator and do my homework and give them eight decimal places, you know, mm. and marks it up. And I learned you cannot get eight decimal place accuracy when you're given three significant digits in your data. Makes sense. Makes sense. So I had to drop a bunch of uh, numbers from my calculator to turn in homework. Uh, so that's... Um, my first electronic calculator. Uh, and then uh, later in college, after I'd gotten out of engineering and got into accounting, I got this. This is a TI calculator. It would look familiar to a lot of people. Uh, this, is, this one particularly was called a business analyst because I was in the accounting program then. So this does all the uh, you know, current values and present values and future values and does uh, you know, mortgage payments and all that kind of stuff, just pushing a couple of buttons. So that was very handy in uh, an accounting program. Uh, the interesting thing about these TI calculators, somebody else mentioned the TI calculators. <clears throat> I don't have exact numbers for you, but I know that TI, they had like a calculator for everybody. Uh, if you recall, they had you know, like 20 or 30 models of calculators, but they only had like a half a dozen different uh, chips. And what they would do is uh, they would put the same chip in like six different models of calculator and uh, just not turn on some of the features or not provide a button for it or whatever so they didn't have to make a different chip for every calculator. So uh, they shared chips on some of them. But that, that's a, a nice calculator for accounting and business people. Uh, along the way I picked up some strange calculators. This one is a very pocket size calculator. Uh, and its other claim to fame is that it also has <clears throat> alarms, you know, like a date and time alarms in it. And not only does it have alarms, it has musical alarms. So I can set an alarm on this to go off at a certain date and time and it'll play a tune. Uh, so it had a selection of tunes in there. Uh, plus it was much easier to put in my pocket than that, that uh, Commodore thing over there, which never did fit in the pocket. Uh, so this became an easy to carry calculator. It doesn't work. I didn't put any batteries in it, and I don't know if they're, you know, decomposed or what. It's in the pocket. Oh, there you go. It does fit in the pocket. <laughs> That's in your pocket. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> okay. And it's a cover. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we'll do uh, one hit on computers here. And then uh, this is my first uh, computer. It's a uh, Timex Sinclair 1000. Uh, there, were, there were two different uh, models of this sold. Uh, I don't know if this is the first one or the second one. But the Timex Sinclair 1000 had 2K of memory, RAM, had 2K of RAM. Uh, I could type in uh, basic instructions, basic program. Uh, I actually did something useful with this. I got it just because I had to have a computer to play with. Uh, but I actually did all the um, bowling statistics for our bowling league one one or two seasons. Uh, and then there's a printer. I got a printer that went with it, and I printed on a tape. So I would uh, input each person's bowling score, 
uh, for that week and have it print out the uh, you know averages and so on uh, for the next week. And I had 2K of memory. <laughs> uh, the storage on this was a, a cassette tape player. They had a, a memory expander for that that you could shove on the back, if I remember right, that it's like a, fits over it like this. Okay. I, I, uh, I didn't have that. 8K possibly. I, I did get, uh, I did, you know, you type on this for like five minutes and you're ready for a different keyboard. <laughs> so I, I did find a, uh, you know, in a hobby, computer hobby magazine, I found a keyboard and a metal case. And so this has no guts in it right now. I took the guts out, put it in the metal case, put the keyboard on top so I could actually type. Um, so I did that, had the printer. Uh, the storage was a cassette player. So, I mean, you can look at it see what the uh, inputs and outputs were. <clears throat> uh, there's no guts in it. Okay, switching to um, eh, a brief stop on cameras. Okay, uh, I'm kind of a, a photographer, and not so much lately, but for, for most of my life as a photographer. And I didn't bring um, many cameras, I just brought a couple of unusual ones. This is a, a disc camera. I don't know if many people saw that, a Kodak disc camera. Got a cover on it. <clears throat> uh, camera looks fairly ordinary. It's kind of flat. The uh, disc feature of it is if I uh, open it up here. Uh, you can see in the back, there's sort of a square, roundish kind of area, and you just put a disc in there, almost like a diskette, a little disc in a, a film disc in a case. Uh, sort of like the idea of the uh, three and a half inch diskette. And uh, we actually got this from my mother-in-law who was always asking for pictures, so we thought we'll get this. It's so simple that she could use it and she'd take pictures. And uh, it turns out I misunderstood the situation. She did want pictures, but she wanted somebody else to take them. <laughs> so she didn't use the camera. So <laughs> but uh, it was an interesting idea. Uh, it didn't really take off very much. They made several models of this. Um, it was pretty easy to use, but uh, it just really didn't catch on. So that's an unusual camera. You want to look at that? Those pictures are really grainy because the negative is only about that big. Very, yeah, the, the actual film is very small. The negative is very small. Now this one is a very cool camera. It's a swinger. I don't know if anybody remembers, old enough to remember the ads for this. It's the swinger. Okay, it's a Polaroid camera, instant pictures. What year were we talking, Paul? Uh, I was still uh, pretty much a kid, I don't know. So it's gonna be like uh, 50 years ago. You know, 45, 50 years ago. Okay, so the early, early Polaroid cameras. This was a, a simplified version. Um, they had really cool advertisements on TV about this. You're really hip and swinging if you had one of these. Uh, <clears throat> so open it up, and yeah, let's see here. There we go. The film on this, was uh, in a roll, a loose roll, not wrapped around a spindle or anything, just a loose roll that fit in here. You, you left the paper hanging out, okay? then you closed it up, <clears throat> then you pulled out the paper and the first picture was uncovered, the first negative was uncovered, okay? Um, and then you, uh, I'll have to let you try this. I put a battery in it, it still works. I don't know if this is going to work inside or not. It, what you do is you squeeze this red knob and twist it, and when the lighting is right, it will say yes. It'll, or the word yes will appear in the viewfinder. I think it's too not bright enough in here to do it. Uh, and then you snap the picture. And then you push the button, pull out that one, rip it off, and then you have to wait when you pull it out, it puts together the developer on the, on the uh, negative, okay? And then you wait like 15 seconds, then you peel it off and you have your picture. Then you have to get a little plastic container, open it up, pull out a little sponge, and wipe it on the picture that will keep it from fading away quickly, hmm. okay, to preserve it. <laughs> so it's, uh, let's see if we have enough light now. If you turn it all the way, it just about says yeah. Now, if you point it up at the light, it'll say yeah. Okay, so you squeeze that and twist it, and if you go all the way one way, it'll start to say yes. Try it out. <clears throat> and of course,
course, uh, a camera that age, you, your flash is a, a one-use flash bulb that you have to pop out and replace every time. <coughs> so those are just some uh, unusual cameras. Uh, switching to phones, okay? My first phone yeah. was a, uh, what I call a bag phone. Uh, you, in fact, saw a phone like this in um, Lethal Weapon. Anybody remember? Danny Glover had one of these. He got out of his police car, and he's carrying the bag, and he's talking on the phone, you know, out walking around, and that's so cool, walking around, portable with a phone. <laughs> his had a battery in it. Mine didn't have a battery. Uh, mine I had to plug in to the, uh, what was the extra antenna? Here, I had to plug into the cigarette lighter. So, uh, you know, you got the bag, the phone is just a, uh, you know, a black lump in there, uh, and, the, and then you have this for the handset. Okay. Now, you know, the old cell phones, this is a cell phone, the old cell phones had uh, a really cool feature, and that is they had a button for everything if you remember old cell phones. They were very easy to use because they had a button for everything and they were all labeled. So you knew exactly what to push to do what. Now we have all these multi-purpose touch screen things and you have to remember where to go and how to get there and what it's called. But old phones had a button for everything that was clearly labeled, very easy to use. So uh, I got this when I was traveling uh, to uh, Elgin from Oregon, Illinois to Elgin, Illinois uh, every day for work. And uh, I got this through work. They uh, had a, some kind of a discount program. Uh, so because it costs like 95 cents a minute to make a call, uh, in those days you paid by the minutes. Okay, and it's very expensive. So I'm not on the phone chatting, you know, just to chat. Uh, I used it to tell my wife I'm gonna be late. I used it, you know, for emergency situations. That was about it. So it's under my car seat. I would pull it out, plug it in, and uh, make a call. However, I quickly discovered that trying to use it <clears throat> with this antenna inside the car didn't work very well. You know, there weren't as many uh, towers, cell towers around. I got really poor reception inside the car. So I had to get this. So when I wanted to make a call, I had to get my phone out. I had to plug it into the cigarette lighter. I had to replace the antenna with this and stick this on the outside of the window. Okay, to make a phone call for my car. But it was cool. <laughs> I had a mobile car phone. Yeah, there you go. A mobile car phone, okay. But um, that was the nature of the technology. It was not digital, it was analog, and... Um, Is that three watts? What? Is that three watts? I don't know. I don't remember. I still got the uh, carry phone book here. If you want to look at it, you can look at it. So that was my first cell phone. Then, uh, then we got to, you know, pocket phones. Now this, you know, if you pull out your phone that you have right now, and then uh, I hand you this, this is going to seem so heavy. It's going to seem so heavy. Now again, it has uh, many buttons: send, end, you know, power, volume, all labeled, easy to use. Uh, this is a little heavy to carry in a pocket, but I did. Or I, I, you can actually uh, put it on a belt and uh, have an antenna, built-in antenna. So that was cool. So it went that way. Now, I'm not sure if this was my second phone or third one or what, because the, <clears throat> the phones I've had that I've liked a lot, most of the best ones, got handed down to other family members. You know, the really good ones got handed down to other family members, so I don't have them anymore. But uh, I, so I don't know if this might be the second or third phone I had. You can take a look at it. Just feel how heavy that thing is. <laughs> Imagine carrying that in your pocket. Okay. Another phone. Okay. Um, let me tell you, uh, younger folks, once upon a time, people wanted their cell phones to be smaller, <laughs> not larger. Okay. This is about as small as I got on cell phones. Uh, it's a Motorola. I don't remember what the model is, but uh, it's a, you know, like my last flip phone. 
And uh, it had a little holster. By then, I was carrying everything on a little holster on my belt. And when I, you know, I can hand this around, you can feel it. But the surface of this is so slick. It, there's no texture. Uh, it's very slick. It looks good. But every time I pulled it out of the holster, it just squirted right out of my hand. I dropped this almost every time I used it. So it's very durable. But uh, this is probably my smallest phone. Now, everybody's probably got a couple of favorite phones. This is a lot of people's favorite phone, or one of them. It's a uh, StarTac, Motorola StarTac. Very popular. They made many different models for many years. Uh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, it, it, it was both analog and then the changeover to digital. They started making digital ones. Uh, the convenient thing about this is I, I would have it in a, a little clip on my belt. I could pull this out with one hand and with, you know, I had practice and flip it open, answer a call, make a call, close it up, put it back all with one hand. Uh, very handy. Didn't squirt out of my hand like that one did. So this is older than that, and I like this better. Uh, it's got the extended battery on it, so it has a little bump here. So, and there are a lot of different models. How many of you had one of these? Anybody else have one of these? I had one of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, well you gotta see this. You gotta check out this phone. This was a very popular model of phone, or style of phone, the StarTac, the Motorola. Uh, they sold a lot of these, and I had, uh, well I had this one, and this was, uh, my wife and I both got them. This is the only one I have left because it got handed down you know, until it broke. So check that out. <clears throat> That's probably back when all of the phones were made in Harvard, too. I don't know that. I imagine. When they had like Motorola there. Motorola? I imagine family members that worked there. Uh, another favorite phone of mine is the Razer. Uh, also Motorola, the Razer phone. I liked it. It was thin, uh, easy to handle. Um, I found it easy to use. What did you think about the buttons? Did you have any issues with the buttons? On the sides? No, on the, on the just the... Oh. The, I remember thinking that... Oh. It, I remember thinking it was awkward. Uh, no, I, I don't think I, I had you any didn't? trouble with All that. Right. But, uh, and this, uh, the Razer, of course, has a camera in it, which is... Uh, you know, uh, Star Tech didn't have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's just I just brought it because it's another one of my favorite phones. It was a good design. It's good design. I gave one of these to my uh, I gave mine to my father-in-law. That was pretty much the Cadillac before they came out with Apple's iPhone. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That was, that was, that was the it. Big flagship. You had a, you had a razor. It was it was unbelievably thin. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And that's you know it's got the battery in it. That's how much it weighed too. It's very light. Okay, now we're going for. Um, uh, and I had a I had a Droid two phone, which is my first smartphone, and now I have an iPhone five. Um, so that's where I'm going on the phones. Uh, I want to take you to um, what we just learned about in my 102 class, and that is convergence. Convergence is where multiple devices uh, come together in, in one replacement device. Okay, so when I was traveling uh, for a while, I, of course, was always on the lookout for things that would make it easier to travel, easier to take the stuff I needed with me, you know, either a smaller or a lighter, or one thing would do for two things or something like that. So things that I had to take when I traveled. I was doing seminars, uh, computer seminars. I had to take my laptop computer. I had to take a projector. Okay, I had to have that. I also took my phone, say my Razor phone there. I had to have a cell phone. I took my you know, Palm. I got three different flavors of Palm up here. Very popular in my house. I took my Palm uh, for my uh, phone numbers, addresses, appointments, that kind of thing. Okay, I took uh, my iPod. This is one of the uh, you know old uh, big iPods, uh, 80, 80 gigabyte. I th they had a uh, disc in them, didn't they? Mm -hmm. I think these had a disc in them. The original three. Yeah, uh, it's got an 80, 80 gigabyte disc in it. 
Here? This one? Yeah. Okay. This is the one I have. I had the older one. I had the, 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 the 20 gig one. And okay. That one had a disc in it. Okay. So I think right after that. They yeah, I, I knew some of them did. Okay. Well, they, they, had, they doubled the memory again after this one. But anyway, so I had to take this with me to listen to music, uh, distract myself, uh, riding on airplanes and everything. Um, <clears throat> and uh, actually, I, I learned how to put uh, movies on here. I um, put a couple of movies on here. You had to get uh, uh, software that would convert the movie into the iPod format. And then I'd, I'd be sitting there and uh, watching a movie <laughs> on a little tiny screen. <laughs> It's better than reading the airline magazine. <laughs> if it's close enough, everything's a big screen. Yeah. So I had that. I had uh, GPS. I've got a couple of GPS. This is a GPS, uh, my first GPS, that actually uh, fastened to this particular palm like that uh, and had GPS. Okay, uh, attachment. Hmm. Now this, uh, I believe this uh, had a, yeah, the Palm had a uh, SD card in it. So you loaded the maps on the SD card. So you had to get the maps for your part of the country because you can't load the whole country on there on one SD card. So you get the maps, uh, you download the maps for your part of the country, put it on an SD card, put it in the Palm, attach the GPS, and uh, you're ready to go. So I got the Palm, I got the GPS. Um, was there any issue with signal on that? Yes, uh, there was. Uh, and this is my second GPS, uh, detachable antenna. So I would lay this up on the dash, because having that uh, inside the car, again, reduced the signal. <clears throat> so I would turn this on, and I'd lay it up on the dash in the very front. It's Bluetooth. It would connect Bluetooth to... Um, yeah, palm one, palm one goes with this, uh, to this. And uh, I would uh, be looking at the map on here, and the GPS would be up there. Uh, so that worked better. But yeah. How accurate was it? Like, how, how close could you zoom in on your location? Uh, well, that stage, because of the selected, did they, did they shut off the selected GPS by that time? Did it hit that? I, it wasn't uh, great. It wasn't great. Uh, it helped me find places, but I would be coming down uh, the interstate in Wisconsin, and it would say, get off on this exit. And I go, why am I getting off on this exit? Okay, well, I get off on that exit, I drive through a little town, and then I get back on you know, the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> so they would do things like that, you know, <laughs> um, to that. Uh, now, you know, the, uh, the current GPS has its issues. I mean, I got, I traveled, I got a bunch of GPS stores. Um, one of my favorites is, uh, you know, with my, uh, I believe it was, I was on my droid, so I was doing the GPS on the droid, okay? Uh, and I was in uh, Arkansas, and uh, I can't remember the town, but it has like a, a regional airport nearby, uh, like Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport. And so I'm in town, dial it in on the GPS, and get in the rental car and head back to the airport, plenty of time. And so uh, I'm driving along, following instructions, and I'm thinking, hmm, it doesn't seem to be exactly the way I came, but you know, the GPS will get me there, we'll go. So, so I get off the, the you know, four-lane highway onto a two-lane highway, and I get off on that. Uh, I drive a little while, it says turn, and I turn onto a, a narrow blacktop road uh, and, uh, okay, it's supposed to be a shortcut, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going down this narrow blacktop road, and it turns into a, it's this winter, uh, an ice and snow and mud road, okay? So now I'm going this, down this little trail, <laughs> and I'm pretty worried about where I am. And, uh, and then after a minute, I see at the end, you know, at the end of the trail, uh, a chain link fence. I think, civilization. So I drive down to the end of the trail, and there's a chain link fence and a road, and the airport's on the other side of the road. All right, so my little trail turns, so I turn on my trail, and I get to another blacktop, and I get out on the real highway and get to the airport. But uh, current GPS will do stuff like that for you. So uh, <laughs> you kind of have to pay attention. Convergence, okay, so I had, let's say, 
Uh, laptop projector, got to have that. All right. I had my cell phone, I had my iPad, I had my Palm uh, for my phone numbers and, and appointments and all that. I had my GPS, I had my camera so you can take pictures of rental car damage. Got to do that. Okay. Uh, and, I was, and all of these things had cables, chargers, all that stuff. And you have to carry all of this uh, in whatever you're going to carry on the plane. You cannot give it up to the airline because you might not get it back when you need it. <laughs> okay, so uh, it had to be my briefcase. And my briefcase was really heavy and it didn't have anything but all this stuff in it. Uh, so that was that. Now, convergence. Uh, now, uh, like when I finished traveling like three years ago, I had my uh, laptop, my projector, and my phone. That was it. This has got all that other stuff in it. So that's convergence. Now, technically, uh, the projector I have could be run without a laptop. I could uh, put a USB, a flash drive on the projector and do a show from that if I was just doing a show. But I wasn't doing a show, I was demonstrating software. So I had to have my uh, laptop. So uh, that's convergence. Uh, anybody need a um, three and a half floppy version of Microsoft Office 4. <laughs> Professional 4.3? Well, this is all of it. <laughs> it's like um, um, 13, 14 disk X. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I still had that on the shelf. Brandon, have you ever used a floppy? Yeah, I have. You have. Uh, Moo? Mo? This back at the Elf Bowl meeting. Yeah. Moo, have you, uh, have you used a floppy disk? You used yeah. floppy disk? He's never used a floppy disk. No. You never used a floppy disk. Never used it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have one with me to show you. I had to load in the six disk to do uh, the install dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With the six disk. Yeah. Boot. And, and the office is like 13 disk, 14, yeah. something like that. And Paul, did you want to switch over to your stuff now? I do. Okay. I, have I will. Some pictures to show you. Yep. I will uh, switch off here and I will let you.